Hey, so welcome guys, welcome to another um, TMD Q&A session. Uh, something a little bit different from my channel. Um, as I've been holding some Q&A questions in my Facebook group, um, question number one is from Chip Husinger from America. Um, and his question was, where's the best model shops to go to when you visit Japan? Oh my God, this is going to be a long question. Um, so basically, um, there are some main stores that you want to check out. And the first place, the the fatherland, the mecca of Gundam kits, model kits, um, is Akihabara. Um, so you want to check out the electric on the electric store called uh, Yodabashi Camera. They also do um, eight percent tax back. Make sure that you carry your passport around with you because some places do offer tax back. Um, got Yorobashi camera literally across the road there will be a McDonald's to your right there's another store called uh, Hobby Off um, or yeah it is Hobby Off and that you have to go down B1 floor basement yes, it's a very small shop but you can get loads of like uh, Japanese toys model kits and extra other stuff um, Going out of that area, you head into the main um, road of uh, Akihabara, and literally there are like I wouldn't say hundreds of stores, um, but your main ones you want to check out is the big building outside Akihabara Station called the Radio Kakin, and that has eight floors of just modeling madness, toy madness, every madness you can think of. So you've got stores like Yellow Submarine, Volks, Ami Ami, um, what else have they got there? And a few third party stores. Jungle as well is another good store you want to check out. Um, there is a guy who I've just uh, made friends with on YouTube. He's an Australian guy who made a really good video called Dave's Model, Model Shop something. I forgot his name, but I know he's called David, so I'll put the link into the description. Um, but he did a very good video. There's a shop called is it um, Eduardo's something? They do a lot of used military model kits. Um, but basically, when you go to Akihabara, um, you can get um, like maps, like an Akihabara street map, and it'll actually tell you which stores to go to. I mean there are many there's a few Volk stores. Um you've also got a store called Tam Tam, which is kind of on the outskirts of Akihabara as you go out of the main road. Um the shops I go are mainly jungle, um Tam Tam, Yodabashi, um Volks. And I think that's about it. You've also got the main store of uh, Kota Bikia as well, which is in Maid, Maid Cafe Alley, that's what I call it. But um, there are plenty of YouTube videos out there on stores in Japan. But um, you've also got another area, which is not in Akihabara, it's called Nakano. Google Nakano Broadway. Nakano Broadway is a really, really cool shopping centre where it's just loads of like toy shops, model shops, hi-fi equipment, it's, it's crazy, you you got to check that out. Um, but if you've got any specific questions, Chip, if, you, if there's anything that you're after in, in terms of genre, just uh, hit me up on a PM, I'll be glad to answer your question, man. Thanks for that question, man. it's a real good one, that one. Okay, so the next question is by Martin Rigby. I'm in a park right now because it is frigging cold uh, and the little one's with me right now. So um, This question is going out to Martin Rigby in England um, and he's given me a very, very good question um, which <laughs> might take a long time in explaining. Um, the question is, 
why don't Japanese, Korean, Chinese manufacturers realize that there is a market in the UK for Gunpla, Gundam and get promoting it right over here oh god so this is basically my own opinion about that shit and one reason is and this is from my own personal experience is that when I first came here to Japan like 10 years ago people ask me like what hobbies do I like and one of them was obviously Japanese anime, Gundam, Plama, building stuff like that and to my amazement they were actually quite shocked in the fact that I actually knew about all this and the Japanese tend to keep things locked in to their own culture, society kind of thing and they like to keep things for themselves quite a lot and to be quite honest they actually are kind of closed off to the rest of the world now in terms of business and Bandai the company um, very good question a lot of people have been talking about this for years and my only theory is I just don't think that there are quote enough people to actually or enough customer basis for Bandai to set up in England I don't think Bandai would ever set up in England to be quite honest or have distribution there um, I just think that if they start selling Gundam kits like France has just got their um, little piece of the action right now um, it means they have to cater for every single European country and logistically that might be a bit of a problem I don't see it as a problem that's the whole thing um, I think they can do it um, I think the popularity of Japanese pop culture has grown in the last decade or so um, for the UK specifically I mean, <laughs> how many of your friends do you know that build Gundam kits? Or even actually build any kit, to, to be honest. Um, I can see it being popular with like Tamiya and um, like armor kits and stuff like that. There is a market for that in, the, in England. But sci-fi, especially a Japanese anime that's very niche. Uh, I just don't think it's going to happen. I mean, if they're going to if they're going to do or make France part of this whole WBC kind of thing, um, having a European competition like the European finals almost would be the most difficult thing to manage. And you also have to think about, um, for example, how are they going to judge each country's entries? There's only like a very short time frame for them to actually um, manage um, logistically all those countries. So, is Gundam linked to the WBC? Yes, it is. It's their biggest promo event for that genre. Um, do I think it should be in England? Of course, I'm from England. I used to buy my kits from Toys R Us back in the day. And you know, you guys know this. Like We, we could only get like um, the Gundam Wing series kits. Uh, and I remember buying all of them and getting to the point where I couldn't buy any other kits. And there was no like sourcing of kits at that time. I wasn't using eBay at that time, you know. Um, I, there was no Facebook or anything like that so yeah man it was it was really difficult to get information on it um, when you mention Korea and China and you have to remember that export import 
um, it's it probably easier to manage that kind of stuff in Eastern Asia than it is to like do in, the, in Europe um, sadly as I've just posted up in, in Facebook in my own TMD group about <laughs> about about British companies selling Gundam kits at extortionate prices um, sadly you know because there's no real quote official distribution um, the kit prices are just jacked up big problem for the buyers um, but you also have to take into consideration of all the taxes and stuff like that that they're gonna charge so theoretically speaking I think that maybe the kit prices would be high anyway um, obviously um, also there's a big problem with communication type of business set like the Asians and the Europeans have a totally different way of doing business um, and it, it's a qu this question will be going on for years and years and years to come Bandai do showcase stuff I think I believe at the London Comic Con or something like that I know one guy did a YouTube video about he asked Bandai why there wasn't any Star Wars kits in the UK and apparently one of the Bandai reps said uh, oh well it's not popular in England and um, this is the mentality of the Japanese um, they're not very well traveled if, uh, they don't really know what's going on even though there are a lot of like anime there's forums and magazines like Neo in the UK. Um, obviously, <laughs> on, on my own business perspective, it's it, it's better for me for it not being in England because that means I'm not going to make any money, right? It's going to kill my business. Um, but like I said, I mean, I, I just honestly think there is just no, there's not enough customer bases for them to set up. And I know a lot of British people complain and moan, um, but you have to think about this from a business perspective. I mean, you do the math, you do the calculations of how much, how many kits would they sell, theoretically speaking. Think about it. You're not catering to the Asians where they've grown up with this kind of culture like since what 20 years mid 80s You know, there's people out in Malaysia, Singapore, Hong Kong, China that have grown up with Gundam They've grown up with model kits. They've grown up with mech chair and everything else And what did we have in the UK? What like Thomas the Tank Engine? Scooby-Doo? <laughs> yeah, it's it's a totally different way of mindset out here so that's that's the only response that I can give regarding that question Martin but like I said man um, I hope one day it does come to the to the UK um, obviously I think they're gonna open the doors a little bit more France have got their thing Italy have got their thing I think um, there's probably not enough people in the UK that would enter the competition anyway to be fair um, but yeah it, the solution is one you either have a European competition uh, that would take a lot of organization there would be like thousands of entries I don't know how they would judge it but it'd be very very difficult um, but that would be that that would be the only solution that I could I could probably give you guys. You got it. All right, Can you check if the camera? Am I in shot at the moment? Is the camera good? Don't don't touch the camera. Just look. Yeah, good. Yeah, can you see me on the screen? Mm, so small, but I can't. I can see. Mate, no, don't touch me, go over there. Um, next question goes out to Paul Holmes out in Canada. 
Thanks for writing your three questions, man. Um, Paul has put, what's the most difficult kit project you've ever worked on or finished? Oh, man. To be quite honest, since I've been here, I haven't really built that many kits, to be fair. Um, I would, I wouldn't say it was kits. Uh, I would say part kits, part figure painting. Um, I think the biggest challenge kit that I've done has just been the Plum Vulcan 135th. Reason is, is that I went totally mad on diorama. Um, I built extra stuff. I was hand scratch building parts and stuff like that. Um, Obviously, the next few projects going on this year, I will be doing more LEDs, making my dioramas better. I've bought lots of new tools this in the last few months, so hopefully get those tools put to good use. Um, I wouldn't say it was a kit, but I find figure painting quite difficult. Um, so I hope to practice more on figure painting this year. Two, question two. Are there any kits manufactured from outside of Japan you wish they'd sell more of in Japan? Um, that's a good question. You're talking about foreign kits, right, Paul? I'd, I'd actually like to see more American kits being brought over to Japan. We do get them, like Mobius, um, AMT kind of stuff, but it's like it's like a it's like a flip reversal about that it's like we get imported kits we have to pay the jacked up prices you guys get our kits vice versa you have to pay those kits um there is a lot of i wouldn't say model kits i'd say more resin slash casters slash sculptors out in south korea um WHP is one of them. I'd like to see more Korean designers have their stock in Japan and availability as well is a big problem as well with um, stuff coming in from South Korea. But the South Koreans right now, I, I love their work. I think the South Koreans are very underrated in terms of what they've been doing. They do really awesome figure sculpts. They do some really cool mech stuff. There's some really like cool, talented people out there in South Korea. Um, so check those guys out if you get a chance. Um, question three, <laughs> little Zilla's here. Are you going to get your Wii One into building when she's a bit older? Um, good question, Paul. Of course. Um, my dad's got me into it when I was, I think. <laughs> 10 years old but I think at that time when you're 10 man you, you get glue everywhere you're cutting shit with nail clippers you know it's, shit's mad real man um, of course I mean if I get my business to where I want it to be um, it's not super big she might take over she might have an interest in it um, obviously, I bought her some model kits already that I plan for when she gets to around about five years old. Um, there are a lot of kits that I have that are going to be sat there for investment for her. Um, I do come from a long line of artistic fam uh, people in my family. I'm hoping she's going to carry on that legacy. Um, so we shall see, man. Obviously, if you're into model kits, it's kind of a done thing that the kids get into. I'm not going to push her into it at all, but um, uh, I hope she she watch, she's been watching me on the bench. She she's keen, like she's over there right now. Um, but yeah, I'd like to get her into it. Um, obviously, the modelers out there have got kids already. Me, come here. Go on camera. Bring her over, you okay. can. Yeah, so I'd like to um, see her build stuff and stuff. Um, she's already kind of likes 
scribbling shit on paper and stuff, so. She's there, look. Can you hear in the background? So, yeah, hopefully, we'll, um, we shall see. She's gonna come on camera. You wanna come on camera, Kat? I'm making a YouTube video. Somebody asked me a question. Are you, is she gonna start modeling kits? Gompla. Yeah. Maya, come here. Don't touch the camera. Right there. Come here. Oh, come here. No, 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 no. Right there. Come here. Quick, the camera's gonna run out. Maya. 